thank you, PJ, for the invitation to us to speak at this event and uh, share a few quick updates on uh, this important topic. Um, arguably, uh, after Marrakesh, you can say that this uh, toolkit is probably the next important um, um, outcome from uh, uh, WIPO uh, in, in the area of limitations and exceptions or user rights, as we like to call it. So um, it's a very important uh, development and, and one that we strongly welcome as libraries, uh, archives, um, uh, museums, and other cultural heritage institutions, uh, certainly users of copyrighted uh, works. Uh, I'm aware that uh, we have a few archivists and librarians in the room, but uh, uh, the um, Rest of the audience, I don't know whether they are familiar with the technical aspects of preservation. So I'll briefly talk about that and in the interest of time, get to the toolkit. Uh, so first, uh, why do we do preservation as uh, uh, archivists uh, or even individuals? Uh, the idea here is to protect and safeguard cultural heritage. Um, and we know um, in the recent past that uh, most of these cultural heritage uh, resources uh, face a threat from human activity, natural disasters, uh, climate change, but also normal wear and tear. So if you have a, a resource, um, your material, uh, chances are that the more you use it, the more it is subjected to usual wear and tear. Hence, we need to preserve. Uh, and this idea of a preservation copy. Uh, but as we know, in this day and age, we do much of our preservation, uh, but also creation of, uh, um, of cultural resources uh, in digital format. So much of the preservation is now happening in, in, the, in the digital environment or digital format. Uh, so preserving cop copying is uh, certainly very important uh, in the different contexts, uh, but most important in cultural heritage institutions. When we talk about preservation in context of copyright, certainly WIPO uh, implicated at these institutions, libraries, archives, museums, and others. So here, to just to refresh your mind, uh, these are some of the key um, events that have happened in the recent past, uh, which should, uh, of course, concern most of us uh, with regards to preservation of cultural heritage resources. Uh, on the left, uh, most recently, we were given the action numbers from the UCT fire, which happened in 2021. Um, a lot of resources uh, lost. Uh, much because they could not be uh, uh, preserved di digitally. And, and that's obviously, it's not the only reason, but certainly copyright was a, an important consideration in terms of what they could or couldn't preserve. And, um, you know, around this uh, slide, you can see so many other events. And of course, most recent, uh, the, the event in Syria and Turkey in terms of the earthquakes, which have obviously claimed a lot of lives but and you see uh, in, in mainstream media, uh, that is talked about a great deal. Uh, what you don't hear much are the cultural resources that have been lost in this natural event. So preservation is very important in those regards. Uh, so what does, um, uh, how, what role does copyright play in terms of uh, preservation activities? Again, we have a uh, technical uh, audience. Uh, most of us are, uh, well versed with copyright laws and what uh, it entails. But uh, as you can imagine, uh, copyright tends to grant exclusive rights to authors and therefore any making of copies or reproduction of those copies uh, implicates uh, those rights. Uh, preservation by its very nature involves sharing, accessing, distribution, distribution and other activities, uh, including making available of the preserved copies. So uh, the exclusive rights are implicated. So it's very important that we have uh, limitations and exceptions for preservation purposes. So uh, WIPO has been quite active in this area in the most recent past, certainly. Um, Teresa Hackett talked about the different uh, studies which have been conducted some directly on the topic of preservation. And here we uh, talk about David Sutton's work, Professor David Sutton's work, 
but others have uh, indirectly touched on uh, preservation. Um, in 2019, uh, WIPO held a number of regional seminars um, in Singapore, Nairobi, and Santa Domingo, and uh, which culminated into a, in an international conference in Geneva. And uh, clearly, preservation uh, emerged as a consensus issue. And of course, um, um, the, the member nations, uh, member states, insisted that WIPO needed to make progress on limitations and exceptions for preservation. So uh, the next step was obviously uh, this toolkit, uh, which is a, an important first step in addressing uh, the recommendations uh, out of the seminars, as well as uh, the WIPO conference. Uh, so STR 42 um, asked the WIPO secretariat to develop uh, a toolkit on preservation. Uh, it was prepared, uh, prepared by these three experts who are well known to most of us. And the uh, um, civil society were involved in reviewing of the toolkit, uh, myself and Teresa Hackett, uh, Jonathan Ban, who is uh, not on the call today, I think. Uh, we are part of those consultations. Uh, it's important to note that this is, this is a non-normative document, um, so it's not meant to set new international obligations, uh, but a, a voluntary uh, document that is supposed to guide legislation. So we like to think it is an important, excellent uh, reference point for member countries uh, who are interested in crafting uh, preservation exceptions in national laws. And, but also it's a very important, it provides important uh, rationale for why um, those preservation um, uh, provisions are important, uh, as well as providing uh, legislative choices that member countries have to make. So very briefly, um, the toolkit is divided into four major parts and an appendix. Uh, the first part uh, it constitutes uh, definitions and justification. Uh, again, uh, the authors were cognizant of the fact that uh, most of the users, whether policymakers um, or academics, are not necessarily going to be experts on this subject. So they spent a, a great deal of time uh, providing definitions and justifications for preservation. Part two uh, provides considerations in what they call proactive preservation uh, or forward thinking preservation, uh, recognizing, as I noted uh, earlier, that a number of events that um, uh, affect cultural heritage resources are not going to provide notice. So we are at a time where we need to preserve proactively or forward thinking in terms of preservation as opposed to reactive preservation. So that is a very important uh, consideration. Uh, part three uh, looks at considerations for the intersection between corporate law and preservation uh, by cultural heritage institutions. Uh, again, uh, recognizing that the end user end users may not be experts on the subject uh, of preservation, both preservation and, uh, and copyright law. So it's very important to understand the intersection between the two. Uh, finally, part four uh, provides a statutory excep exceptions for preservation, uh, specifically how to construct or formulate those exceptions. And then the authors go on to provide uh, sample clauses and reference charts on how to build legislative provisions for addressing exceptions for copyright and preservation. Uh, so if you are interested in getting the detailed um, uh, details of the toolkit, uh, the authors will be speaking at SCCR 43 on the two, um, Tuesday, March uh, 14th, uh, from 1700 to 1800 hours. Uh, Central European time. Um, of course, uh, WIPO agenda can shift uh, on a whim, so, but that is the general time when we expect this toolkit to be unveiled uh, to member countries and, and other interested parties. You're welcome to tune in. Um, so, so what is sort of the final takeaway and what action items should we uh, look at in terms of SCCR 42? 
First and foremost, from uh, the cultural institution standpoint, we welcome the preservation toolkit. As I mentioned, it is probably the most important next step from Marrakesh, uh, after Marrakesh, uh, coming out of uh, WIPO. So it's a very important um, uh, tool in terms of expanding user rights. Certainly, uh, the role of cultural institutions in preserving cultural heritage resources. However, um, what is missing are two important items. Um, there's more, but certainly two that we want to highlight and we want to urge uh, member countries and civil society to pay attention to in the forthcoming SSCR 42. First and foremost, the idea that the toolkit is limited uh, to just preservation, making of preservation copies. It doesn't address the very important issue of access to the preserved copies. Hence the risk of creating what we call dark archives. So uh, that is an important next step in this process uh, that WIPO addresses this issue. Um, then the issue of uh, cross-border, uh, uh, the idea that uh, uh, preserved uh, materials or copies uh, sometimes are going to be split in different collections but also users of uh, those resources, um, whether it is end users or experts like archivists or librarians or researchers don't exist in one geographical location. So there is a cross-border aspect or element to uh, the use, the creation and use of uh, preservation uh, materials. So this has not been addressed in the current toolkit. Um, it's an issue that we hope that uh, WIPO addresses uh, in the next toolkit or whatever next step um, member countries decide to, to, to take. So with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.